This is Dead Serious, a show about short horror stories worthy of discussion. I'm Dead Palette, and I don't want anybody else. Today we're going to be taking a look at a story entitled, The First and Last Time I Cut Myself. Uh, this story is written by Puppy Fights. Um, she recommended that I read this story. I'm just going to get right into it to give some critical feedback. I want you to understand something. All of my friends cut themselves, and I hated it. I hugged them. I cried with them. I took the time to understand their pain and helped many of their scars heal, as well as prevented new ones. I did this all while I lived a life of fear, and I never told them because they didn't need to know. They didn't need more pain, more reasons to cut. Okay, so we're we're probably dealing with very young people here. Uh, cutting yourself tends to be a tendency that young people have as opposed to a sort of malady that a, a more adult person would deal with. You know, it's very typical of, uh, more typical of adolescence, I wouldn't say very typical uh, don't, don't cut kids. Um, and so here we're talking about this person feeling that they have a responsibility, uh, that their friends come to them, but that responsibility prevents them from venting from their pain being shared because they don't want to press upon their pain onto somebody else. And I think some people can relate to that. Uh, pressing one, two of my closest friends were at addicted to cutting themselves and they knew it. Uh, they talked about the release. To them, it was their chance to feel something, even uh, when they felt nothing. And it felt so good. I'd dare to call it close to an off-the-wall greatest orgasm ever. So again, this is speaking truth of what cutting is like from all accounts that I've heard. As to why people do it, that uh, they would rather feel something than feel emotionally dead, just having nothing inside them at all. Uh, and the idea of it feeling good, being orgasmic in some way, I've also heard tell of this. So this story really isn't giving us any new information, it's just kind of setting the scene right now. And hopefully it will go into a more, um, what, what would I say? A, um, I wouldn't just say more interesting direction, but a more specific direction from here. Well, I told myself I would never do it, that I didn't need to, and that my situation was different, and wasn't, in fact. Many might say it was worse. At my school, I was a loner who hung out with loners. I was low energy, <laughs> okay, Jeb Bush, and liked it that way. At home, I was an unfeeling robot, chores, 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 eat, chores, homework, chores, whipped with a belt, shower, bed, and cry myself to sleep. Okay, so they're living uh, in an abusive house, um, and, and this is potentially an escape for them. No one knew I was becoming suicidal. I told no one. No one knew I saw myself jump out a third-story window. I told no one. No one knew my stepfather, grandfather, was a pedophile. I told no one. No one knew he tried to coerce me into his bedroom. I told no one. So the day I finally started giving into my mind's desire would of course come. There was nothing stopping it. My friend showed me how to remove the blade from the sharpener, but I used a razor. Okay, so this feels very much so like venting, and I think that one thing that's very important is to take whatever it is that you have. So in my case behind the curtain, I'm not a, a person who's had to deal with a whole lot of emotionally damaging things. I've had a pretty mundane life, and that's kind of reflected in the horror that I've written, um, very, very much so centered around those kinds of things, um, things that are unsettling, things at the edge of your, you know, view, things that aren't necessarily directly in front of you, but peripheral around you, horrifying you, near misses, those kinds of things. That's very much evocative of my kind of writing, because that's always been my position. I haven't really faced any real horrors. I've seen evil, but I've never seen horror in the way that most people contextualize it. Whereas, if you're talking about a personal trauma along the lines of abuse, of along the lines of um, 
feeling isolated, having depression, um, feeling emotionally dead, these kinds of things, then you, you need to take that style of, of personal trauma of, you know, issues and baggage and find a way to make it a little bit more grandiose. Cause this feels very much so like telling. And that I believe is good if you're, you're just kind of like on some sort of Reddit confessional thing. But if you want to take it in the direction of creative writing, I think that there needs to be something more specific here and, and a longer tale. Um, I'm not sure where it, it feels as though there's going to be some sort of twist coming. And this is very much so in the vein of Ashcan horror, but I think that it is a little too direct, a little too on the nose. Um, and I don't, again, you know, I could sit here all day and tell you, you know, try to make this more grandiose, but that's not necessarily the best thing to do. It's best to ask yourself how you can creatively enhance that story, because it's not my kind of writing. It's not my kind of baggage, if that makes any sense. My body was shaking so much that when the blade touched my skin, I didn't even have to move to create multiple cuts. Three of those cuts were deep enough to bleed. I bled so much. I bled more than I was prepared for. I know many wrestlers who have <laughs> uh, gone through that as well. I was crying softly as I, I was crying as softly as I could. The cuts stung like hell and I couldn't keep all the blood in the sink because my body didn't have the strength to stand. So I collapsed in front of the sink, hitting my head on the way down. I sat crisscross and stared down at my wrist. There was a fascination there, and in that moment, I understood why. It felt so nice. I wasn't thinking of anything else but the blood that ran down and stained my socks. Ooh, bloody socks, that's my thing. Sting, that stinging sensation, the unending river of red. It was so comforting, like cuddling with someone you love. All my worries were gone. Now I needed, now all I needed was for someone to come in here with a gun and shot me in the back of the head. Should be shoot me. I would say that there, there's this, um, analogy of, you know, like it, it was comforting, like cuddling with someone you love. That I don't think is specific enough. Just like with comedy, specificity is funny. Being more specific, I think in horror, the more specific you are, it's kind of the same thing. Comedy and horror being two sides of the same coin. Comedy, tragedy, two sides of the same coin. So, you know, what, what could you do to make that line more specific about uh, being comforted by someone you love? Uh, it's also important to know your audience, so what would relate to the audience that you're shooting for here? This only lasted moments. The loud opening of the front door made me jump. My stepmother's voice, welling fight, uh, welling fight or flight, it was so slow but so fast. I was on a time limit. I cleared the bathroom of every splotch of blood that I could find, rushed out of the room, a bandage around my wrist, went into my room and put on a long sleeve shirt and some bracelets to hide the bulkiness of the bandage, and then ran downstairs to greet the woman who punished me for being a burden on her. My stepmother never knew, and I never did it. My, oh, my stepmother never knew, and I never did it again. I would uh, phrase that last sentence a little differently or kind of give it more space, take it out of the paragraph that it's in. Um, you know, something like, my stepmother never knew what happened, and I never did it again. Uh, I think that that would give it more weight, especially seeing as we're hearkening back to what the title is. Um, I do like the title uh, quite a bit. I didn't talk about that. Uh, it's a very intriguing idea. Uh, but let's finish this off real quick. I look back at the time a lot. It still haunts me. I won't cut. I don't need to cut. And honest, it's honestly not helpful. I understand the reason. I get the feeling, but it won't solve my problems, and I've found more productive ways to escape the pain of life. Okay, so I think that with everything that we have here, I really like the title. It's very descriptive of what happens. Uh, this isn't explicitly labeled as a horror story, but if you take that in mind, I think that you look at kind of the, the, the after school special approach of like, 
you know, I did drugs and alcohol. And, and then instead of just telling you the real effects of drug and alcohol, they like amp it up and make it way worse than it is. I would, as, as a writer, my tendency would to be go, would be to go in that direction. Amp it up more, make it more, uh, exciting, uh, make, you know, not necessarily a skeleton pop out at the end, but I think that something to punctuate that happening, uh, the, the actual cutting would help. If you look at a story like Hands by Unseen Wombat, that is a story that's tackling, um, the pass out game, which is a very bad thing to do. And it has a, you know, a, a more flowery ending with, you know, a much more excitable, amount of supernatural things going on, pseudo supernatural things going on. I don't know necessarily what the goal of this is, if it's to be that straight story of just, this is a thing that I experienced and I'm trying to vent this, or if you want it to be more of a cautionary tale, um, something where you're not necessarily <laughs> pushing a political agenda or something like that, but trying to dissuade people who are thinking about cutting from doing it kind of giving that uh you know reason as to why it's a bad thing here i don't necessarily get that but it seems like we're hinting that way uh, trying to say like it was a mistake and that kind of thing um if that's the case i don't think that this story would necessarily dissuade me from that these are all thoughts um i know that pumpy fight said that the story was written a while ago and they're just now posting it online. I hope that the the feedback that I'm giving here is helpful. If you have any uh, feedback, do leave uh, that in the comments. It would be very helpful. Uh, so let's get on to our sponsor of the day. Our sponsor is One Fourth Bleach Solution. One Fourth Bleach Solution. The only way to properly disinfect a bloody mess.